So by the end of this tutorial, you should end up with something like this, an NFC tag that can be used to verify your product's authenticity by just tapping your phone to it. We'll get a one-time link to our website where we'll tell you whether the URL generated by this tag is authentic or inauthentic. You can also configure these tags to link to your own custom site, but I'll have to go over that in a separate tutorial. For now, let's go over the basics. In order to get started, you're going to need three things, an ACR122U NFC tag reader and writer, an NTAG 424 DNA NFC tag, and at least one site credit, which you'll get for free when you create an account or when you buy tags from us. And I've provided links down below where you can purchase all of these items. Let me start by explaining exactly what makes this so secure. Every time I tap my phone to one of these tags, it's going to generate a new and unique one-time URL. So let's talk about what makes these URLs secure. When a tag is programmed, we generate and store random encryption keys on the tag. These keys cannot be retrieved from the tag once it's programmed, making it non-clonable. So when a tag is read, it uses these keys to generate a cryptographically secure URL. These URLs are generated by encrypting a hard-coded unique identifier, counter, and some random data to generate this unique encrypted string, which is of course added to the URL. The data is unique because the counter gets increased by one on every read and the padding always changes. The counter is also used to identify how many times the tag was read from the time of programming, and it gives us the ability to expire previously generated URLs that may not have been visited yet. For example, if a tag with an ID of 123 has a counter at 9, we know that any URLs with a counter of 8 or below are expired. Once the encrypted string is generated, the tag then uses a second key to calculate its CMAC, which is kind of like a checksum or signature. The keys are all 16 bytes long and are not stored in our databases as clear text. They're actually encrypted using this 16 byte randomly generated eternal code or ECODE. That means that I can't see what the encryption keys are and neither can anyone else with access to our databases unless they've had access to the physical tag. So let's go over what all this means. First off, you can't clone the tag because you're not able to read the encryption keys. Secondly, you can't store unvisited URLs for later because it's just going to expire when a newer URL gets visited. Lastly, these tags use very large encryption keys and it would take at the very least a few thousands of years to crack. So it's very secure. Security is the number one priority of the eternal vault. So with that being said, let's get started. So in your preferred web browser, you'll need to navigate to eternal.app, E-T-R-N-L dot A-P-P, and the page should look like this. So just click on register and fill out this form. Once you're finished, make sure to agree to the terms and conditions and click on submit. You'll get a link sent to your email address to confirm that the address is valid. And only after you click on this link, you'll be able to log in. After you log in, the first thing that you will be asked to do is to create an organization. This would basically be your company or brand. This allows you to give people access to program tags or create pages on behalf of the organization with limited access. For example, you can have someone that only has access to program tags but doesn't have the ability to modify any secure pages or organization information. And for this example, I'm just going to name my organization Example Org. And once I hit submit, my organization will be created and I'll get taken to my organization's settings page where I can modify my name, Instagram, website, and description. And over to the left, you get a few tabs for additional settings where you can do things like invite members, generate API keys, and keep track of your organization's credits and credits are needed if you want to program tags. So if you want to program one tag, you need one credit. And then once the tag is programmed, you can verify its authenticity for the lifespan of the tag. 
hence the name Eternal Vault. And at the time of recording this video, you get 25 credits for free when you create your organization. And also, every tag you buy from us comes with one free credit per tag. So if you were to purchase 100 tags, it would come with a code to redeem 100 credits. And you would just click this text that says redeem credits here and enter the code to apply these credits to your account. So back to the settings, you also get the options to modify your personal account information, which is pretty standard info. If you wanna update your email preferences, you can just click on the emails tab and to update your password, you can just click on the passwords tab and fill out these three fields. And whenever you wanna log out, you can just click the log out button at the bottom. Now let's check out the dashboard. The first thing that you're going to see is a heat map of where your tags are getting scanned. The pinpoints are generalized locations based off of the user IP addresses. You can specify a time range by using the to and from inputs here, and you can see where the authentic, inauthentic, and total scans are coming from by using the data dropdown here. Now if we click on the overview tab, we get a chart that tells us how many scans you're getting over time with some more specific numbers for your organization. A green line represents authentic scans, red line represents inauthentic scans, and a black line represents authentic and inauthentic scans combined or total scans. And just like the heat map, we can specify a time range to look through here. At the bottom, you'll see a list of your most popular pages sorted by visits whenever you have active tags. And this page tab over to the left is just like the overview information, but for specific pages, which we can't see yet because we don't have any pages to select. So let's continue to create a secure page. A secure page is what your customers are going to see whenever they tap their phone to one of your tags. This is where you would add your product image, details, social media links, and whatever information you want. I'm going to name this page, my first product. And after I click submit, we get redirected to the page editor. Over to the left, we have some drop downs where we can edit the page content, security messages, social media and other links, and some advanced options that we'll have to talk about in a tutorial of its own. Let's start by adding the title. And by default, if no title is specified, we use the page name. And the difference between the two is that the page name is what's used internally when we list all your secure pages. And the page title is what the end user is going to see. We'll just call this one invisible t-shirt. Now let's add some product details. The product details field actually supports markdown and HTML with some limited styling. So you could add things like headers, bulleted list, numbered list, and more. I'm just going to add a level two header that says, what's it made out of? And then some plain text that says, this t-shirt was made from our patented invisible threading by using our magic sewing machines. Okay, so now I'm going to add a product image. So I'm just going to click here and add our invisible t-shirt JPEG, ironically. So we're done there. Now let's move on to the security messages. The security messages are the messages that display based on the authentic status of the secure URL. Authentic, of course, means that the URL generated by the tag is authentic. Expired means that the URL has already been used. And inauthentic means that the data used to determine authenticity is missing or bad, which ultimately means that you more than likely have a counterfeit on your hands. For the authentic message, we're just going to say looks legit. And for the expired message, we'll say this URL has expired. Try reading the tag again. And for the inauthentic message, we'll say this may be a fake. Okay, so now we can move on to our social media links. All you have to do is click on this plus symbol here 
and you can add whatever URL you want. So I'm just going to start by adding our Instagram, which is instagram.com forward slash eternal vault and click add. And once I click submit, it's going to detect the social media site and add the corresponding logo. So I'm going to do this for my Twitter to click add. And I'm also going to add our website. Done. And last but not least, we need to save our page. So click save at the bottom. And as long as you get this green message, you are good to go. So now let's download our programmer. And to get to this page, all you need to do is click on guides like I just did, and then click on download over to the left, or you can go directly to eternal.app forward slash download, and you'll get to this page. And then you would just click on the link that corresponds to your current operating system and just to run the executable file. So I'm going to move over to my Windows machine and show you the next step. Okay, so now that my programmer is installed and I'm logged in, I just need to plug in my ACR122U NFC tag reader. And once it's plugged in, your programmer should look something like this. This drop down at the top is where you would select which secure page to program into the tag. Right now, my first product is selected, and notice that it doesn't say invisible t shirt because that's the page title, and my first product is the internal page name that we gave it. And below that, we have three different buttons that represent the three different modes of the programmer. These two are pretty self explanatory with program mode making it so that when you place a tag on the NFC reader, it gets programmed and configured for authentication on this page. Deprogram mode does the opposite of that and removes any custom configurations or data that we programmed into the tag. And currently the read mode is designed to read the tag's unique identifier and use it to generate a custom QR code. It does this to basically give developers a way to set up product registration systems. So if you were to sell shoes with these secure tags in them, you could include this QR code in the packaging so that your customers could have their products linked to their accounts. This is more of an advanced topic, which I would need to go over in a separate tutorial. However, the read mode will soon also provide you with the URL generated from reading the tag too. So now let's put the programmer in program mode and program our first tag. So I have the programmer in program mode. Now, all you need to do is hold the tag to the center of the reader until you see the message that says program successful. When you see that, you're done. One credit has been spent and the tag is now ready to go in whatever product you want. And if you want to test it out for yourself, just tap your phone to the tag. On iPhone, the NFC reader is closer to the top, and on my Samsung Galaxy, it's closer to the center. And keep in mind that on some phones with bulkier cases, you may have to take the case off in order to read the tag. So just tap the tag and click on the link. You should be shown the authentic animation and then your secure page. So it looks like everything is checking out and we're good to go. So what if you program the wrong page into the tag? All you have to do is put the programmer in deprogram mode and deprogram the tag the same way you would program it. Just hold the tag to the center of the reader until you get a message that says deprogram complete. You will get refunded one credit and then you can program the tag to whatever page you want. One common issue that you may run into can occur when you start programming a tag and then for whatever reason, the tag becomes out of range or the programmer doesn't finish programming. When this happens, all you need to do is just put the programmer in deprogram mode. D 
deprogram the tag and then program it again. And this should resolve your issue. If you're having any other issues or aren't sure about something, I have a Discord available that anyone can join and ask questions or just chat with other people experimenting with this technology. A link to the Discord is in the description below. I hope you all found this tutorial helpful. If not, we also have written documentation available on our guides page. And of course, don't be afraid to ask questions in the Discord. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content and leave a comment down below with what other tutorials you think we should make. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.